Random coefficient regression can be used when we want to explore the relationship between a response variable, y, and a continuous explanatory variable, x, and we have repeated measurements of x and y on individual subjects. In ordinary regression, there is a single fixed value for each parameter, for example, the intercepts and slopes. In contrast, random coefficient regression allows these parameters to be unique for each subject. This is done by modeling all the coefficients of the regression model for each subject simultaneously using random effects and, importantly, allowing for correlation among these random effects. If you want to learn more about random coefficient regression, you might find it useful to watch this short introductory YouTube tutorial produced by the Roslyn Institute. You can also find more information and worked examples in the GenStat Remel guide. Let's work through the box rat example described here. We'll start by opening the BoxRat example dataset. These data originated from an experiment to study the effect of drugs on the growth rate of rats. The rats were put in one of three treatment groups, control, thyroxin, and thiouracil, and their weights were recorded weekly. Before we begin modeling the data, let's use a trellis plot to explore it visually plotting the weights of the rats over time for each treatment group. Select Graphics, Trellis Plot. I'll select the scatter method, set the Y and X values, and the groups, then click Options. I'll give the graph a meaningful title and deselect the option to display a key. Now click Run, and a few moments later, we have our trellis plot. The resulting plot suggests that the profiles have a hint of curvature, so we'll model them using both linear and quadratic time effects. For illustration, we'll begin by analyzing the data from just the thiouracil treatment group. We'll then expand this model to include data from all three treatment groups. Let's restrict the box rat spreadsheet to contain only the weight data from the thiouracil treatment group. Click the spreadsheet to give it focus, then select Spread, Restrict Filter, to Groups. Select Drug as the factor to be used to restrict the spreadsheet, and Thiouracil as the level to include. The Control and Thyroxin spreadsheet rows will be excluded from our analysis. Our random coefficient regression aims to model a quadratic weight profile over time allowing for random variation about the quadratic parameters for the individual rats. We do this by fitting fixed quadratic polynomial time effects and correlated random intercepts and quadratic time polynomial effects for each rat. We can easily fit this model in GenStat using the Random Coefficient Regression menu. From the menu, select Stats, Mixed Models Remel, Random Coefficient Regression. I'll put the response Y variate, weight, into the data field. Rat is our subject factor, and time is our variate of measurement time points. As we are wanting to fit quadratic profiles over time, select Quadratic. GenStat will automatically calculate a variate of squared time values with the name we specify in the Save Time Squared field. Let's name it Time SQ. Finally, in the Treatment Structure field, I'll include both linear and quadratic time effects. 
We'll be modifying the settings in this dialog later on when we analyze the full data set, so make sure the pin button is in the upright position. This makes the dialog remain open after the current model has been fitted. In the options, we can select what output to produce and also control some of the model settings. We'll request residual diagnostic plots, choose not to center the time and time SQ variates, and leave the other settings at their defaults. Click OK and Run. After fitting the model, we can inspect the residual diagnostic plot for evidence of departures from the residual assumptions of normality and constant variance. The residuals from our model look OK, although there are a few big residuals. In the output, we can see the estimated covariances between the random intercepts and random linear and quadratic regression coefficients for the rats. We've also outputted the wall tests for the fixed effects. The p-value associated with the quadratic effect is 0.024, providing evidence of curvature in the weight profiles of thiouracil-treated rats over time. Now, let's extend this model to include data from all three treatments. Click on the spreadsheet to give it focus. Then click this button to remove the restriction on the BoxRat dataset. If I scroll a bit, you can see we have our control and thyroxin rows back again. Our aim is to compare the quadratic weight profiles of the three drug treatments, control, thyroxin and thiouracil. This is done by fitting a fixed effect of drug and allowing the fixed quadratic polynomial time effects to differ between the treatments. As before, we also fit correlated random intercepts and quadratic polynomial effects for each rat. Let's bring the random coefficient regression dialog to the front. We just need to modify the treatment structure field to include the three fixed terms associated with drug. Now run the analysis again. The wall tests provide strong evidence that the quadratic curvature differs between the three drugs. In other words, there is a drug effect on the growth rate of rats.